The diamond difference at Rogers Jewelers. You can buy diamond and gold jewelry with confidence because we sell only the best. When you visit us, you receive personal attention and service. That is a Rogers tradition. When it's time for something special, visit the diamond professionals at Rogers Jewelers. Rogers Jewelers. Rogers. Rogers Jewelers. Giuseppe Verdi's famous opera, Travatore, may never be the same. This is animated opera, and while it may look like a children's comic book, Ron Elgara created the 17-minute drama with adults in mind. Ron wants to make opera lovers out of opera haters, and that's a formidable task, and may explain why this work took seven years to complete. We wish him the best of luck. And that's the 11 o'clock edition of the News Watch Weekend Report. Thanks for joining us. Betsy Ross will be here tomorrow at 6.30 for Morning News Watch. And we hope you'll join Pat Menarsen for the News Watch at 5.30. Until then, good night, everybody. Sports presents Sports of All Sorts, Cincinnati's Sports Magazine, brought to you by your Greater Cincinnati Toyota dealers, who invite you to see their exciting new cars and trucks. And now, here's your host, John Popovich. Hello again, everyone. There's a Cincinnati offense out there somewhere in search of itself. It's the offense that was the most prolific through the first 10 games of the NFL season. It's the same offense that hasn't scored a touchdown now in two games. The Bengals lose to the Browns in Cleveland today, 24 to 6. Ah, the central division of the AFC, where a big football matchup can resemble WrestleMania, where parity reigns supreme. It's the division where you can punt and then pass on the same play. It's the same division that has dogs in the stands, where you can have a 5-7 and seven record and still be a contender. Hey, we're not out of this by no stretch of the imagination. Next week, we could, we could all be tied again. Today in Cleveland, it was Ohio's Summit Conference, the Browns against the Bengals. That was answered rather quickly. Third play, a clump of infield mud caused Boomer Esiason to float a ball that bounced around twice before being caught by Tom Cousineau. It gave Cleveland good field position and led to a 29-yard field goal from Chris Barr for the first lead of the game. Meanwhile, the Bengals were moving backward. Twice on the second possession, Boomer Esiason was sacked by a revved-up dog defense. They was ready. We was ready, too, but I think they wanted a little more than we did. Again, the Browns got good field position, and Danielson engineered a conservative but effective drive up the field. As they switched sides for the quarter, the Browns faced a fourth and one at the two. Taking that advice, the Browns pitched left to Kevin Mack, and he was not touched as he sped into the corner for a 10-0 Cleveland lead. But it didn't look like it would last long. The tide shifted when James Brooks shifted gears from forward to reverse to forward again. The Browns' defense over-pursued, and Brooks had a lot of daylight down the right side. 39 yards before he was tripped up down to the Browns' 34-yard line. But that's the first case of where the well-oiled Bengals' offensive machine started to sputter. Esiason was not finding open receivers. He was finding Browns in his face instead. Well, I think what happened, John, is uh, a couple times some of our receivers slipped. A couple times they held our receivers up at the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, they had a good pass rush all day long. They played a lot better. I, th they, I think they played more of their style of game today. They put a lot of pressure on the quarterback and came after us and tried to make some big plays defensively, and it worked for them. Midway through the second period, Esiason found no one open, and he took off for an 11-yard gain. His stretch for an extra yard was painful. A guy kind of tripped me up, and I came down on the ground right directly on the hip. Boomer went down with a hip pointer. Turk Schoenert comes in, rusty, willing, and able. Anytime the weather's cold, it's, it's pretty tough to come in. Cold or not, the riverboat gambler moved the Bengals forward, but the drive stalled out at the 19. And Jim Breach got the Bengals their first points with a 30-yard field goal. And 10-3 is how this Ohio summit stood at halftime. 
The Bengals prepared to turn that tide quickly. To open the second half, Jim Breach kicked a dying quail just beyond the first line of the Browns receiving team. And Steve Kreider rushed down the sidelines to recover for the Bengals. That was a uh, play that we had hoped and we felt like we could get against them. We executed the play, but when we didn't move the football, that was obviously a momentum saver for them. But the Bengals' offense, which had produced a total of minus one yard passing in the first half, didn't get much better. And then when they gave it back to the Browns, their stiff-armed quarterback had only one plan. The first series, that we were just going to run the ball at them and try to give me some time to loosen up. And uh, they just kept playing bump and run, bump and run, bump and run. And finally, we, you know, you just can't let some team do that to you. On second and nine at the 28, the Bengals came at Danielson from all sides. It was an all-out blitz, and he got hit hard on the throw. And it was not, uh, it was a matter of of an instant, and he threw the ball perfectly. Danielson laid it into the hands of Clarence Matthews, who was streaking behind Louis Breeden the rest of the way for a 72-yard score. So while the fans were talking about Boomer and that other Cleveland quarterback named Bernie, it was Gary doing the job. Gary's uh, uh, presence may have been a factor, but I think it would be inaccurate to say that that was a significant consideration. A very major consideration on this back-breaking play, a younger quarterback might have missed the blitz or hurried the throw. Danielson took the lick but lofted the ball perfectly into the hands of his receiver. The Bengals, though, were far from dead. Schoener guided them on another solid drive. Helped along by some Eddie Brown heroics, he skipped along the sidelines for a 43-yard pickup to put the Bengals into striking range again. That's when the machine conked out again. Jim Breach was called on for a three-pointer. It was 17-6. Not bad, except that Cleveland's much maligned offense went to its rarely seen quick strike attack, this time by ground. Kevin Mack off the right side for a gain of 35 yards down to the Cleveland 35-yard line. One play later, Schottenheimer called for a carbon copy, except to the left side. And watch this ground-level angle. Mack on the attack, the final 35 yards. He wedged into the end zone for another Cleveland touchdown. The running game is, uh, as we know it is, and as it's been advertised, is very strong. It shows you, though, you don't have to throw the ball 40 times to be effective. What you have to do is keep the other defense off balance, and that's what the most good teams do. The Bengals, forced to pass, still hadn't lost their life. Once again, they launched an effective drive between the 20-yard lines. Schoener to Collinsworth was a big gainer. But again, when they got inside the 20, they ran out of gas and luck. Really, that was the difference in the game. They held us, you know, we were down there probably as many times as they were, and they, they scored touchdowns out of it, and we didn't. They didn't this time either. Fourth and gold at the fine. They ran a zone against us, and they had everyone covered, and then Chris started to break away from everybody, and I, just as I was going to uh, throw it to him, uh, a guy came from behind him and was right in his way, and I tried to pull the ball back, and, you know, it just came out of my hands. And just like that, a chance for the lead in the Central Division was out of the Bengals' hands taken out by a team they walked pretty good just two weeks ago. We uh, used the same game plan we used two weeks ago, exactly. And we executed this week the way we're capable of executing. You're playing against the best every weekend. They're as good as you are. It's a matter of who happens to get it done that weekend. And for this weekend, the Bengals didn't get it done. Now they have two teams in front with only four games to play. You're looking for the best truck deal? Okay. So what's your game plan? I thought so. You don't have one. All right. Here's all you need to know. Right now, Toyota dealers have a good selection of tough Toyota trucks, and they want to talk deals on 4x4 automatics, 5 speeds, 1 tons, and extra cabs. Think you can remember that? Make a number one deal on the number one selling small trucks at a Toyota dealer near you. Who could ask for anything more? That'll be $7, sir. Come on. Let's make it nine. Volunteer to pay extra? Only $2. Let's give him three. Yeah. Happens every day with long distance, but U.S. Telecom can save you more than MCI and Sprint and up to 40% more than AT&T. Anytime, anywhere, to any other state with no fees or minimums. Call U.S. Telecom. 1-800-531-1985. Well, now. Okay, 13, but that's my final offer. U.S. Telecom. The right price. We are now through our first dozen weeks around the National Football League. Today featured some upsets and some come-from-behind victories. Jerry Green has all the highlights. It looks as though the only thing that will stop the Bears is kryptonite. As Walter Payton said, a new NFL mark going over 100 yards for the seventh straight week. 
Steve Fuller continued to fill in nicely for Jim McMahon as he tossed a 50-yard pass to Willie Galt down to the one-yard line. That set it up.